Hello and welcome to Blocks Live TV. Today is Wednesday, March the 13th. We're now live with the latest in the crypto world. It's 10.30 a.m. in New York City, 2.30 p.m. in London, 11.30 p.m. in Tokyo and 3.30 p.m. here in Malta. While the total market capitalization has remained relatively flat, around the $134 billion mark after rising yesterday following the Binance Exchange downtime. The cryptocurrency index CCI 30 has remained relatively calm above the 2,300 point level after rising yesterday. The index stands 4% in the green so far in March and it's up nearly 8% year to date. The 30-day Bitcoin volatility index showed little change yesterday and it remained near the 2.6% level for the third day in a row. The daily traded volume indicator has eased back slightly, slipping below the $30 billion mark as noon approached in the GMT time zone. The Bitcoin dominance indicator has slipped to stand just slightly above the 52% level. The top five digital assets are all trading just slightly in the red. Bitcoin has found support around the $3,900 US dollar level as it's virtually unchanged over the past 24 hours. Ether rose yesterday, but it has slipped slightly after facing resistance at the $135 price range. XRP has been bound to the 31 cent range over the most of the past 24 hours. Litecoin has been trending close to $57 mark yesterday after rising sharply. The rise was followed by a relatively calm period for EOS, as well as it trades just slightly above the three US dollar and 60 cent level. The coin 360 heat map shows a generally mixed picture as the overall market is moving sideways. According to the token spread website, the XM exchange has the biggest buy and sell side difference for the Bitcoin dollar pair and it's 0.26%. The BitMEX and XM exchanges have the minimum maximum intermarket spread of nearly 3%. So we'll now wrap up this segment by looking at some of the characteristics of the nano cryptocurrency. It was formerly known as Railblocks as rebounding was announced in early 2018. The core team wanted a name that represented the simplicity and speed of the project. It is, currently, it is a currency that looks to improve the scalability and transaction cost aspects. It's achieved by each of the accounts having their own blockchain rather than everyone synchronizing a single ledger. Because the protocol is live and running a node is in low in costs, transactions are processed with no fees. The coin spiked above the $32 level during the bull run in January 2018. However, it trades at slightly less than one US dollar as of today. So we'll now move on to take a look at the performance of the cryptocurrency asset classes. We use data from the Masari website, which groups cryptocurrencies into five major categories, which all show gains. The majority of the digital assets in the infrastructure group are currently trading in the green, and as a result, it's up by 5%. One of the top bullish drivers in this category is the ontology coin, which has increased by nearly 9%. The media and entertainment category is mostly in the green, although as a group it's only increased by a minimum percentage point. The Decentraland coin shows a considerable move north with an increase of 8%, while the Theta token is holding down the group with a decline of over 11%. The financial sector is showing an increase of almost 4% as the Binance coin and Chainlink show a move higher of about 7%. The 0x token is a major bullish driver with a jump of nearly 9%. The Ogor token is one of the few assets that are trading lower with a decline of just over 1%. And the cryptocurrency category is showing an increase with a range of just over 4%. Stellar and Litecoin both show gains of approximately 3.5%. Grin is driving down the group with a loss of 4.4%. And lastly, the services section shows the biggest increase. It's moved up by close to 5.5% in the past 24 hours. The top bullish driver here is the engine coin with a gain of close to 27%. Well, these are where the five major cryptocurrency categories stand so far on this Wednesday. Now, moving on to the final part of this market update, we'll focus on the most significant moves among the top 100 cryptocurrencies.
The session appears to be overall bullish. The Maximian coin has continued climbing higher and it broke through the three cent level on a rise of 31%. The asset is up by nearly 400% over the past 30 days to hit the CoinMarketCap website front page. The Z coin spiked by more than 100% to rise above the $12 mark yesterday, but some of the gains have been given up and the asset stands 24% in the green. The privacy coin was integrated in the multi-currency wallet PolisPay yesterday. This allows users to spend crypto with MasterCard. The payment card adoption has been a major bullish driver for digital assets during the recent days. The Crypto.com chain token has continued gaining ground. It's up by 23% to trade at more than $0.06. Cents. This comes as trading deposits of the token will commence today on the IDU DAX exchange. The KuCoin shares token posts an increase of 20%. The exchange digital asset trades at more than $0.70, cents, which represents an increase of 100% over the past month. The Komodo coin rose sharply along with an increased traded volume to arrive above the one US dollar and 50 cent price level. Now some of the gains were wiped out in a following correction and the asset is currently up by nearly 20%. Just one third of the top 100 assets are trading on the red this Wednesday. The Theta token shows the top decline and it's down by just under 16%. The virtual asset has been on a slide following a sharp increase over the weekend when the asset surged to nearly 20 cents. The Project Pi coin jumped by 100% over the weekend, but some of those gains have been given up. The ABBC coin has been trending lower after hitting the high of 60 cents. The altcoin is still up by more than 500% over the past 30 days. The Aldo coin has declined by nearly 6%. The drop comes after the asset spiked towards the 9 cent mark yesterday. The Gollum coin token has surged above the 8 cent mark on Tuesday. The bullish move was followed by a correction and the token is down by 5% today. These are the top 24 hour moves during the European morning trading session on this Wednesday. We're now joined by our crypto experts, Matty Greenspan, Senior Market Analyst at eToro, and Jason Fernandez, COO and co-founder of AE Token. Matty, Jason, thank you so much for joining us on the line today. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for having us, Jess. Great to have you. Now, Matty, we're going to start with you. Market cap and trader volume have been mostly flat over a month now. How can we interpret this and when can we move in either direction? What can be expected and what could some of the drivers be? Uh, yeah, so volume remains at an elevated level from uh, what we were seeing in early February. We saw volumes across global exchanges bottom out around uh, $10 billion per day. Uh, today we're tracking around $30 billion per day, um, which is pretty good. I mean, this is the highest levels uh, since the bull run. So uh, we're having fun. Having fun indeed, and that is very important. Jason, have you got anything to add? What are we expecting in a move, and what do you think some of the drivers are going to be? Uh, so I think the market cap and trading volume had just jumped up for a bit, you know, just before this, this last month, so it might be consolidating a bit. Um, I think Bitcoin is a good representation of markets, though. Uh, it's been trading sideways for a while. It tested the 4,000 mark several times, but it hasn't been able to break it uh, for any significant period of time. And that's despite volumes being pretty fair. So and they, that obviously means that there's more sellers at 3,900, 3,950 than buyers. So if it doesn't pick up soon, uh, it could go down next. But even in the best case scenario, uh, nobody really expects Bitcoin to go up 20 or 30 percent. Um, but on the other hand, a lot of the altcoins are showing a lot of potential. So, I mean, if you look at Binance, for example, um, if you bought Binance in December, you'd be up 100 percent. So I think a lot of uh, traders are looking at altcoins to make up the gains moving, moving that way. And it's interesting that you've mentioned altcoin because, Matty, you've recently tweeted actively about alt season. Can you explain to our viewers what this means and what it means for the markets? Yeah, so... Uh, alt season is uh, something that we've seen in the market before. Where sometimes when Bitcoin is a little bit more flat and underperforming, uh, so we see these periods where some of the altcoins uh, see astronomical moves, uh, and a lot of the time they take turns. Sometimes surging for a few days before traders move on to the next one. Uh, so Jason mentioned Binance Coin, for example, which is one that I have been holding uh, much since December. It was the first to go. Litecoin and Ethereum. 
uh, uh, pretty much uh, an XLM or uh, most of the triple digits from the December lows. Um, the easiest way to trade in all season. So first of all, if you're a long-term trader, hodler, obviously having a diversified portfolio is the best way to go. But when we see these types of astronomical moves, uh, sometimes the best way is to, you know, sometimes it's fun, I would say, to trade on those movements. Um, what I've done here on this chart is basically put all of the different cryptos that we have on eToro on one single chart. And then you can see, here's the surge that Jason mentioned, and you can see which one is outperforming. Uh, so yesterday was Dash. Uh, the day before that uh, was XLM. Uh, and it, today, XP is outperforming. So, great. Big smile from you, Matty. I love it. Now, Jason, I'm going to turn our attention to you because payment card adoption for spending of digital assets has been a significant bullish driver over the recent days for some of the cryptocurrencies. Now, we've spoken about this before. Could this be a trend and could we see this growing this year? Yeah, I do think it is. I mean, uh, crypto liquidity uh, has been a big barrier for cryptocurrency adoption. And uh, Polish Pay Solution, uh, which is essentially a block pay payment service, you just mentioned it. Um, uh, essentially, they, they just announced an implementation of Dash currency and um, for their MasterCard back debit card. So they already support Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Ethereum, uh, and Digibyte. And essentially, they just announced support for, for Dash as well. And consequently, uh, their, their, their token Polis has jumped up 32% in one day. So that, this is a, a, a huge driver. Like once the, essentially the way it works is uh, once funds are loaded onto the debit card, you can spend your balance anywhere the transaction, MasterCard is accepted uh, and the transactions are basically paid for in cryptocurrency, but the merchants, uh, you know, paid out in, in, in fiat. So this has been a huge driver for Polis Pay. Uh, they've been doing really well off of this, but there's also uh, Grossel Coin, GRS. They saw a massive uh, price bump over the last 24 hours. So they climbed something like 150 percent against the dollar, um, and 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 essentially that follows their tweet say, announcing that they they were going to have a debit card uh, that was backed by um, financial services giant Mastercard. So and of course uh, pay, um, accessing their crypto you know, the the person's crypto wallet. So this has been a huge driver both for Gristle Coin and uh, Polis Pay, and I think that that's going to we're going to see that more and more towards the future. And you made a good point. It's a huge driver, but also is definitely getting people talking. So, Matty, I want to ask you as well, so payment card adoption for spending on digital assets. Are we expecting this to be a bullish trend going forward for the rest of the year? Yeah, definitely. And I believe that uh, Bact in the United States is working on just such a service as well. Uh, we hope that they go online uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but yes, this is one of the things that is going to massively assist we're talking about crypto mass adoption is having the option uh, for people to uh, pay with a card that gets charged in fiat and then settles in crypto. Um, I believe this is something that is quite in demand as far as people. I had even somebody uh, tweeted to me today saying, hey, why does Toro make a service like this? Um, and I believe this is something that crypto advocates want to do very much uh, and that can help from, uh, you know, from the merchant side because they don't need to hook up a uh, whole payment system and rely on settling their uh, you know, Dash or Bitcoin or Litecoin settlements. Rather, they'll get they'll be uh, charged immediately in fiat and then settle later on into crypto. Great. And now, Jason, we're going to turn our attention to you because if we take a look at some of the technical indicators, we've got Litecoin and Binance Coin, rather. They're trading above a 200-day moving average, which is supposed to be considered a bullish sign. Bitcoin's moving below this same indicator, which means it's bearish. Does this mean the coins have broken their correlation with a number of cryptos? We can expect to see them with growth in the following days. You mentioned that you were looking at Bitcoin first and foremost. Yeah, so I think uh, Binance makes money regardless of whether the market is going up and down. It just has to be moving. So the key indicator for Binance will be volume and volume on their exchange in particular. Um, so there's a really good reason uh, for that. So there isn't rather a really good reason for Binance to track Bitcoin uh, thus far. On the other hand, Litecoin has historically tracked Bitcoin, um, but they sort of starting to do really well recently because they had a lot, lot of activity. Uh, they announced a Mimblewimble implementation. Uh, they announced a new uh, focus on privacy and security. 
Uh, also, Venezuela um, uh, made it possible for people to send Bitcoin and Litecoin. Litecoin was the only other supported currency over to Venezuela. Um, so there was a lot of, um, of, of, of interesting positive news coming out for Litecoin. But if you see like the two-hour ch chart and how it's been behaving just most recently, there are some bearish indicators beginning to show on Litecoin. Um, and of course, that's pr probably a little true for uh, Bitcoin as well. And that's an interesting point. And Matty, I'd like to get your take on this as well. Can we expect the coins like Binance Coin, like Litecoin, as we've discussed, can we expect them to see growth in the following days? So I wanted to point out that most of the crypto market is very highly correlated. A lot of the time it follows Bitcoin. We are in alt season at the moment, which is uh, where the correlations begin to break down a little bit. Uh, Jason mentioned Binance Coin, um, which is also which has also been known to move against Bitcoin, but I think that there's a misconception there, um, which is that uh, Binance does well when their trading volumes are up. However, the value of Binance Coin doesn't necessarily track those volumes. Uh, so Binance Coin BNB is a token that gives you a discount um, on the trades that you're doing with Binance. Um, so the fact that it's been zooming uh, is maybe to a misconception in the market where people feel like they're, you know, Binance is doing well, therefore Binance Coin should go up. Um, regarding the bearish indicator, I would like to ask uh, Jason where exactly he sees this. Uh, Jessica, you mentioned 200-day moving average. This is the blue line. Uh, the 100-day average technical analysis basically the uh, time indicator of market. This is basically uh, what most every uh, technical analyst looks at. You can see that it tried to move up above this during the surge in February. Uh, it has been through and now has tested and as a resistance. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, yeah, we can have a pullback, but we now have a solid support uh, on that 200-day moving average, something that we don't have necessarily uh, in Bitcoin, where Bitcoin uh, is quite far off the 200-day moving average, it's coming closer, um, but you know, there's, a, there's a mile between them at the moment. Okay, great. Thanks, Matty. And now while we are on the topic of 200-day moving averages, Jason, I'd like to turn our attention to you. Are these coins, such as Bitcoin, EOS, Bitcoin Cash, are they moving in some cases quite a stretch below the 200-day moving average? Could we argue that they're actually overdue for a positive correction? Is it a sign the market as a whole may still move further south? Jason, what's your thoughts? Um, I think it's more, again, like I mentioned, a question of... Uh a lot of these investors that had money in Bitcoin EOS and and Bitcoin Cash, uh, a lot of they're basically traders and essentially they're moving their money towards uh, the smaller cap altcoins, which are basically showing pretty pretty significant gains over the past few weeks. So I think it's a question of people uh, basically moving their money around, and that's why some of the major cryptocurrencies, because they don't really change, you know, their 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 change rate is really really tiny from day to day. So I think. Uh, some of the um, the traders are looking to get significant gains and probably moving into those altcoins, which is why, um, which is why they might uh, the, their indicators Bitcoin EOS and Bitcoin Cash might be a little bit um, not as great as we'd like. Okay, fantastic. And it appears we have lost Massey on the line due to some connection difficulties. So sorry about that. So Jason, we'll stick with you for our next question. We have commented in the past few days, if Bitcoin continues to knock on the 4Ks door, which everyone is anticipating, and it fails, this would signal a potential drop in price. Do you believe this to be the scenario that we could expect to see? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we see, we've seen that uh, Bitcoin has been constantly trying to hit that 4,000 a range and it just hasn't been able to do it, um, but but it's been it's been trying for quite a while. So I do believe there's quite a bit of um, there's quite a bit of support even at the 3850 range or 38 for 3800 range. Um, even if it were to fall, it wouldn't fall much. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if it if it keeps going the way it is and it doesn't quite cross that mark. Uh, we could we could see it go down, but I mean, uh, going back to um, uh, altcoins a little bit, I wanted to talk about. Uh, I wanted to add to what I was saying earlier about um, some of the coins that are, that are seeing a lot of uh, a lot of gains lately. So, for example, uh, Dash um, and MCO coin and CRO coin have ma basically seen massive uh, uh, uptakes, particularly because of this. Uh, 
of of um, of, of the whole ease of solution for payments and the way they've integrated themselves in payments uh, and the ability to basically use debit cards to spend these. So I think like that's that uh, a lot of there's there's been so much pressure from these altcoins that uh, Bitcoin and some of these other uh, cryptocurrencies are having a really hard time sort of you know. Um, uh, dominating the field and encouraging people, traders particularly, to move their money there. And that's interesting. That's and interesting. if we focus on volatility just for a second, are we correct to believe, Jason, that if we were, were less traders and more investors in the crypto market, there would be less volatility? How would less traders in the space actually impact prices? It's a great question. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, sure, investing and trading are uh, essentially two very different methods uh, to get profit out of uh, these markets. Um, both both of them essentially seek profits, uh, but they do it in sort of different ways. So uh, you have investors that sort of seek larger returns and have a, like a more extended period. So you'd call them kind of the holders. But um, you have the traders that are essentially looking to take uh, advantage of uh, the rising and falling markets to enter and exit positions over a really short time frame. So they basically take smaller but more frequent profits. And so you have them essentially moving their money around quite a bit. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier, is that um, when you start looking at 3,900, like trying to get 4,000, but, go, but going back, it's because uh, all these short uh, these short traders and these uh, uh, sort of these traders rather, are essentially just trying to uh, take, off, take profits off the table uh, when they have a chance. And because they keep doing that, we're not able to like cross the 4,000 and actually, you know, to get to a point where investors that are looking at a longer time frame and possibly bigger numbers are able to make money. Okay, well, fantastic. Jason, thank you so much for joining us on the line to provide your insights today. We'll also send our thanks to Matty as well. Thank you very much for your time today. Sure, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before we sign off, I do have a last minute update from our editorial staff regarding the crypto market. The total market capitalization dipped below the $134 billion level briefly, but the lost ground has been recovered. Trading remains active and the 24-hour traded volume is near the $30 billion mark. XRP has made a sharp move higher to touch the 32 cent level. Now there are plenty of bullish moves as a total of eight of the top 100 digital assets are up by double digits. Well, that's all for this Wednesday's Crypto Now live show. We thank our experts, Matty Greenspan and Jason Fernandez for their expert analysis. And we thank you the audience for joining us and invite you all to accompany us every weekday at the same time. Join us after the break for more from Blogs Live.